Good happy Wednesday evening, October 13, 2021. I'm Riley King. Welcome to this Wednesday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Wednesday evening, so let's get started right now. First up, Sununu says rejection of federal COVID-19 funds will increase burden on health care system. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Stressed? Work it out at Planet Fitness. For just $1 down, get a real workout with tons of equipment and free fitness training. Join today for $1 down, $10 a month. Cancel anytime. Deal ends October 13th. Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, another one of our many press conferences here, uh, just to keep people up to date and up to speed on what's happening across the state, specifically as it pertains to COVID, but also all the other uh, things revolving around the state. Uh, before we jump into the uh, public health update, I want to start off by talking a little bit about today's executive council meeting, uh, where a majority of the executive council voted to reject the $27 million in federal funds, uh, our taxpayer dollars, which would have bolstered and continued our state's very successful vaccination efforts. To date, the state has accepted billions of dollars in federal funding with similar language and uh, stipulations. Uh, this exact same council has voted to approve those contracts with the exact same boilerplate language, and we'll continue to see contracts come forward with the exact same language that is held in question. Um, not a single state that we are aware of has ever voted to reject these funds from Texas to Florida, South Dakota, Mississippi. Uh, every state has accepted these dollars. Uh, our state's response really does re depend on this money. Our healthcare industry is already facing a chronic staffing shortage, and the rejection of these funds shifts our state response efforts to an already burdened healthcare industry with testing and vaccinations and other critical needs that uh, flood into our healthcare system on a daily basis. The people of New Hampshire, I think, have gotten to know that I call the balls and strikes like I see them. Um, I try to be as straightforward and transparent as possible on all of these issues. And today's vote by members of my own party, frankly, was a, a disservice to the constituents that we are all elected to serve. The Attorney General, the Department of Health and Human Services, they addressed all of the councillors' concerns, and they still voted to send $27 million of our tax dollars, frankly, back to Washington, D.C., instead of spending it here to help our state get out of this pandemic. Their vote, I think, showed a reckless disregard for the lives that we're losing uh, while they turn away the tools that our state does need to fight and win this battle against COVID. We've been very successful over the last 18 months. We've done it our way every single time, um, and that's a big part of our success, and we'll continue to do that. Um, but with that, uh, I guess we can turn it over for public health, and then we'll address a few other issues. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire Executive Council rejects 27M in federal vaccination funding in party line vote. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Stressed? Work it out at Planet Fitness. For just $1 down, get a real workout with tons of equipment and free fitness training. Join today for $1 down, $10 a month. Cancel anytime. Deal ends October 13th. Yeah, that's correct, Gene. You can see some of the protesters that are gathered here behind me where the governor and executive council are meeting inside this building. Now, prior to the governor and council meeting getting underway, the protesters gathered in front of this building and they said on the bullhorn that they were going to uh, be silent protests, that they were not going to disrupt the meeting. Well, that lasted for about an hour and 15 minutes. Then just shortly after 11 o'clock, the meeting getting underway, Way at uh, a little after 10. Uh, state police admonished the protesters, telling them if they disrupted the meeting, there were going to be arrests. Then about 11.05, the governor also admonishing the crowd, telling them that he could not be allowed to disrupt the meeting. And then it was shortly after that that the arrests began. Now, some of those arrested went peacefully. Others struggled with the uh, troopers. At this point, we believe there have been a handful of arrests. Some of the people shouting, why were you arresting me? 
me. We didn't do anything uh, as they were led away. Now, once again, protesters continue to gather outside the governor and council meeting. We will have a complete wrap-up of the day's events uh, with Adam Sexton beginning at News 9 to 5. Reporting live in Concord, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Pedestrian struck in hit and run incident. Belmont Police investigating. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need the number one rated reliability of... Belmont police are investigating a hit and run. They say pedestrians were in a crosswalk on Main Street when they were hit around 6.30 last night. News 9 has reached out to the police department to try to learn how many pedestrians were involved or if there's any description of a vehicle they might be looking for, but so far we have not heard back. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. William Shatner, 90, becomes the oldest person to blast into space. Hollywood's Captain Kirk, 90-year-old William Shatner, blasted into space today in a convergence of science fiction and science reality, reaching the final frontier aboard the ship built by Jeff Bezos Blue Origin Company. U.S. to reopen land borders in November for fully vaccinated. The U.S. will open its land borders to non-essential travel next month, ending a 19-month freeze due to the COVID-19 pandemic as the country moves to require all international visitors to be vaccinated against the coronavirus. Supply chain issues threaten holiday goods. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Supply chain disruptions. Um, Trevor Alt starts us off at one of our nation's ports in Bayonne, New Jersey. Good morning, Trevor. Good morning, Michael. So overnight, the Treasury Secretary is reassuring Americans the supply shortages should be temporary, and there's no reason to panic about getting your holiday presents. But right now, this is a crisis. And this morning, the White House is meeting with top executives from some shipping companies and the heads of some of America's largest ports to try to get things moving. This morning, a crisis brewing in the American supply chain. Pressure mounting to unload those massive container ships sitting idle in Southern California ports. Seen here from the chopper of our station, KABC. Workers here at the port are now working around the clock to empty as many ships as possible. These stacks of containers are continuing to mount along the port. Samsung and UPS announcing they'll be working around the clock to try to help end the backlog and get those goods moving across the country in time for the holidays. The cost of using shipping containers soaring up nearly 300% this year, exponentially increasing the price retailers pay just to get their goods from Asia to the U.S. From workers on the dock to truck drivers, each piece of the supply chain is strained, struggling to find enough workers. There's not one easy fix that's available. We need to invest in those blue-collar jobs that continue to move our goods across the supply chain. All that pressure is leading to higher costs for consumers. Diaper prices up nearly 9%, clothes up 4.2%, new cars up 7.6%, meat prices up nearly 9%, and eggs up nearly 10% from a year ago. 
And another facet of this problem is the fact the pandemic has led more people to shop online than ever before. Plus, now companies are encouraging people to shop early, which has created an even larger backlog. And on the supply side, there is an enormous shortage of computer chips, which just this morning has reportedly led Apple to slash their projections for the iPhone 13 by as many as 10 million units. George? Lots of issues mounting up. Okay, Trevor, thanks very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your evening, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Good night and goodbye.